Hi everybody, it's me again. I'm just paying tribute to uh, Mr. Gerard Bourne. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for showing me and showing uh, the world about uh, free energy. <clears throat> so I'll start with this, uh, this pump here. This pump, you guys can see it. You guys all know about the wash machine pump and the uh, Belgian bullet motor, right? There's uh, so much to talk about that uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Uh, I, I cover all of it in this video. I think I only got about 40 minutes. So I'll go on with uh, what I'm going to talk about and hopefully be able to cover a lot of this a lot of it in this video. Um, so, my understanding of uh, free energy that surrounds us all day and all night long, and I mean all day and all night long, and what Gerard was saying, it's in front of us, behind us, above us, below us right and how do you tap into that and if you can't see it can't smell it can't touch it doesn't communicate with you how do you work with it well Tesla was the first one to uh, figure all that out very brilliant must have had a very very brilliant brilliant mind now minds like that, you cannot, uh, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta wonder, right? You gotta wonder, what, you know? And uh, you know, some people may think, you know, crazy, you know, crazy, crazy, right? My understanding, though, of uh, this free natural energy, and you try to talk to, you try to talk to people about about it, and they, you know, they'll turn around and they'll just, you know mention something else, they'll talk about the hockey game or football game or whatever game it may be or whatever, you know, they don't really get it. I get it now. And uh, hopefully after this hopefully after this video you'll you'll kind of get it also too. Right? But there's two ways of capturing this natural energy. One is the way the power plants are making it. Right? The way that they're making it. Yeah, they're using the gener generators, but they're not generators, they're pumps. Right? They're sucking in or they're pumping in the energy as what Gerard is talking about. And it's, it's true. It's really true. Right? Because uh, with the setup that I have, I don't have, the, I don't have the pole transformer. I don't have the pole transformer. But Gerard does. And he's, uh, you know, he's tested, uh, he's tested it out thoroughly. Thoroughly. And he's done many, 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 many tests. He's been at it for uh, five, six, seven years now. I actually discovered his videos on YouTube and that. I'm kind of following in his footsteps along with everybody else out there. Hopefully you are, you know, following along, right? We play the videos back and back and back. We wind it back. And remember, just listen very, very carefully. Listen. If, if, if you need to, just rewind it. Rewind it until you really understand it. You know it in your head now. No one can take that away from you, ever. So there's two ways of making this energy. One is the way the power plants are making it. Yeah, right? They're using the, uh, well, because they're releasing the energy. That's what Gerard always talks about. How to release the energy. Right? And that's by the spark gap. Right? And, and there's lots of videos out there, but Gerard's the, uh, he's the guy, 
And thank you once again, Mr. Gerard Martin. And hopefully we meet one day. I'd really like to sit down with you and chat with you because I've got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of why questions. <laughs> but I'm kind of answering them myself also too. And, and I could be I could be, you know, wrong. Maybe I'm not. So there's two ways of making this energy. One is, uh, by the way, the power plants are doing it around the world, right? With the pole transformers and uh, and the uh, and the spark gap and the process of spinning the uh, the generator as what we know it. It's called, but it's a pump, right? Spinning that shaft. This is vertically, not horizontally. All right. So I'll give you an, I'll give you a, an analogy before I forget. If you look at a uh, well, if you look at a tornado. Look at the tornado. What is the tornado doing? Hmm. Think. Gerard's talking about the vortex, the double helix, right? Now, is that natural or is that mechanical? Something to think about and ponder over, right? Something to think about and ponder over about that tornado. And you can see it now. So yeah. So two ways of making this energy is one by the way the power plants are making it. And they call it, and we all know it as AC. Right? And then using obviously the pumps, generators, and uh, with either by water, which is Niagara Falls, or by wind or by any uh, primary mover such as steam, coal, whatever it may be. And they got solar. Well, solar is only good for a handful of hours and then other than that, well, you're relying on the batteries. But that's a good source also too. Don't get me wrong. The other way is uh, simply just uh, The motor and your pump whether it's small big doesn't really matter right what you're doing is your is your uh, is your spinning now would it be nice to go like this is this the real way that would act like a tornado So, the way the, uh, the power plants are made, I, I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia, so it's BC Hydro over here. I don't know if you're watching it in California or whatever it may be, or Europe, however it is. I don't know what the companies are called. But they're doing it exactly the same way as what all companies, all power plants are doing it around the world. Because, obviously, they must have paid some money for it. Right? Because they don't give out a big secret like that for free. Right? And then the public of those countries will pay for it. Which everybody is around the world. Paying for it. Right? The second way is by the motors and the pump. Spinning it. So if it's true that when you spin the pump with the motor, I'm using a motor, or you can use actually water, Niagara Falls coming down to spin this pump, it's just like a ferry. You know those old ferries with the, with the water, in the, with the, what do they call the, the spin around and around and around and it gets everything moving? Pretty much like that, they're using the water, the water hydroelectric. 
lots of people or uh, if they own property, farms, whatever it is, and they got a creek or a river, they can run that with a um, with a Pelton wheel. And as long as the as long as the current is pretty fast, you know, really fast. If you're getting, you know, possibly I would say about 43 volts, 35 volts. You could uh, you can use that, and you can convert that into the uh, into your grid into your grid system, right? And uh, with your uh, with your inverters, with your battery power pack, um, a mesh battery bank, and if you got an inverter of a you know, four thousand watt inverter, well there you go, you got power there, right? By using the water. Or any other means that you may have. Now, what I what I realized is uh, is that with the setup that I have, as you uh, see that many videos that I have, um, many videos that I have, you can see, you know, those. And even the early ones, I'm just, you know, I'm spinning it, I'm turning it on, I'm putting everything together, but I'm not really understanding really what's going on, right? But if you introduce a fluorescent light, 24 inches, 24 inches long, it's a tube, right? You hook the positive to one end, the negative to the other end. And you turn the motor, the pump, on from one side to the other side. Once you turn it on, poof, the light comes on. Okay, great. Hey, the light comes on. Right? But what is really happening? you got to ask yourself, why did it turn on? Why did the light turn on? You shut it off, the light goes off. You turn it back on again, running at 3,600 RPM or 5,000 or 6,000 or 7,000, the light bulb comes on again. You shut it off, the light bulb goes off. So I've been playing with that for quite some time. And now I got a, uh, a variable frequency drive controller. And it tells me, the and it shows me the frequency of it and the RPM, right? And when I set it to, when I set the variable frequency drop controller to 20 hertz, which is about, uh, I'd say maybe uh, 1500 RPM, the machine comes on, the pump is spinning, everything is spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning fast, but nothing happens, the light bulb does not come on. I turn it up a little bit more, nothing happens, nothing happens, I turn the frequency up a little bit more, remember I start off with, with, with 20 or 25, and I'm going up the ladder, and I'm turning up the dial, 35, 45, 50, right, 50 hertz, still nothing is happening, and I gradually turn it up to 60 hertz, and miraculously, Poof! The light bulb turns. The fluorescent light bulb is lit. It's like the genie just actually appeared. The genie appeared, popped open. The light bulb turned, the, the fluorescent light turned on. Turn it up to 65, it's very bright. Turn it up to 70, it's very bright, still working. 80, 91, it's still on. But the motor is spinning faster and, and now we're not at 60 Hertz so I was uh, turning down the, the variable frequency drive it's got a petriometer on there I'm turning it down turning it down from 91 turning it down to you know 80 70 and I'm getting close to 60 and right around the uh, you know right where it's ready to shut off I, I I've noticed it flickering, light bulb flickering. I tried it with a light bulb also too, and then I tried it with a um, fluorescent, just like what Gerard is saying. There's that narrow window 
Well, you can see from right to left, you see one source coming from the right side to the left and from the left side coming to the right. And if you turn it down a little bit more, they just they back up and it turns off. You turn it just a pinch up, they start to appear, the genie starts to appear, right? The genie starts to appear and the light starts glimmering brighter. The more you turn it up, the more the light strength happens, it becomes to be brighter. So there is this, as what Gerard called, uh, is saying, it's the double helix, right? One is spinning left, one is spinning right, and it's coming in, right? They must join hands. Joining hands. Remember the tornado I was talking about? Is it true, though, now, that when you see the tornado, Are they joining hands? Is the double helix joining hands? Hmm. Is that natural? I believe that's natural. Because it's a tornado. It's like basically, uh, it's like saying, you know, Hurricane Katrina. You know, the big storm is coming. It's natural. But it's moving. So, so is it mechanical? Hmm. Another question to ponder off. Something else to ponder off. So, so that's a, a, a little insight into the double helix and the uh, joining hands. They must join hands. So there's that narrow window right there where you can now see it. See the double helix by spinning the motor of the pump uh, at a certain RPM and you will see it. Not with a light bulb, because you can't see anything with a light bulb. It just comes on, right? Or so they say. But uh, yeah, you can see the left, the, the left side and the right side joining hands. And once they join hands, boom, the light appears brighter, the genie appears. That's what I call it. Hey, when you're rubbing the, the only way for the genie to come out of that lamp, lantern, lamp, you can't shake them out. You can't put water inside there and the genie's going to pop out. No, you got to rub it. That's just a, uh, that's a, that's just a metaphor. So the only way the energy, power, the electricity happens is at the RPM. Whatever the windings are set to. Here in North America, it's set to 60 hertz, which is 360 3,600 RPM, and in Europe it's 50 Hertz, it's 2,800 RPM. So everything's set within the windings of the coils and the magnets, and so on, so on, so on, and the wraps, and so on, so on, so on. So if this is true, that you now know how this energy is produced number one by the second fashion second fashion is just spin the generator or the pump should I say with a motor with a motor or by a river or streams or whatever means that you have so if it's true that that's the way that you can create energy and power and electricity Hey, you're good to go. All you gotta do, and there's millions and millions and millions and millions of motors out there. All you gotta do is grab a couple motors, you know what I mean? A generator or a motor or motors and put them together. 
hook them up with the shaft and spin it. And you will see, right? You will see once you hit that RPM, things will, the genie will appear. It'll pop. It'll come to life. The genie will appear. As soon as you actually turn it down, the genie will go back inside the bottle. As soon as you turn it back up to the speed, the genie will appear. And when I'm talking about, about the genies, I'm talking about the energy, the power, the electricity, the light will come on. Or the radio, or the TV, or whatever electrical appliance you are using, it'll turn on. I was, I was, uh, the other day, I was walking down the, I was walking down the busy street. It was about 10, 30, 10 o'clock, whatever it was, and, uh, I was coming down the street, and, uh, you know, I was watching all the cars go by. All got the headlights on, or kind of going by this way and coming by, but going this way and coming towards me. And I'm driving, and I'm walking down the busy street, going back towards my house. And I'm going, look, look at all the look at all the electricity, all the power, all the energy that is being created by everybody in those vehicles, and and they and and no one even knows what they're doing. All you. Everybody's just thinking, hey, look, I'm inside my car, I'm going for a ride, I got the grocery shop and I'm doing this, or I'm just out for a joyride, whatever it may be. But what you're really doing is, in that car is an engine, generator, just like this, and it is spinning. It is spinning. So everybody that owns a vehicle has power, energy, electricity. All day and all night long. If you look under the engine when it's turned off, when the car is turned off, you open up the hood, nothing's happening, right? Nothing's, nothing's happening whatsoever. It's turned off. As soon as you put the key in and, and you turn it on, boof, the motor starts running, things happen, radio comes on, the lights come on, the heat comes on, everything comes on. As soon as you turn it off, Nothing. It's like a generator. It's like a gasoline generator. But it's run with a bat but, but it has a battery and an alternator also too. But this is a, almost the same concept. So everybody has, well not everybody, but everybody that's driving a vehicle, or is sitting in the vehicle, or in a bus, or wherever, taxi cab, whatever it may be, limousines, whatever it is. There's power, there's energy right there being created all day and all night long. Right? And we're using it all day and all night long. So if we know how it's made, which, no, which, which we don't go to school for this, to learn this, why are we actually coming inside the house and clicking that button and, and, and have a bill every two months for pain and for the power that you're using, electricity, the energy? See, this is the uh, this is the concept that I'm kind of struggling on, and when, and when I try to talk to people about this, they you know think you're really weird, right? Because they don't get it, right? You could you could go to school and become a lawyer, you know, for 10, 12 years. You can go to school or university to become a doctor for 12, 10 years, whatever, dentist, whatever it is, a, you know, um, a chef, a cook, whatever, whatever you desire. You're going to school, you're learning 10 years, 5 years, a mechanic, right, an engineer, um, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. So you're learning. No one even spends 4 minutes on even learning on how power, energy, electricity is even made. And I, and I really shake my head on that, right? And Gerard talks about that many, 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 many times in this video, right? You know, the world is stupid. We're all, we're all walking around every day, right? We see it in front of our faces all day long, this power, this energy, this electricity, you know, all over the place, and we don't even spend three minutes I'm trying to figure out, hey, can I possibly do that myself? Well, no, because uh, 
It's already set up in your house, right? And you pay for it. 